Ladies and gentlemen, I just had pancakes and it's time for some painting. This is the uh, the first live demo that I'm doing here for, for the uh, environment concept design class. I'll be streaming today for about an hour, hour and a half, take you through uh, the painting that I set up for you guys. We'll just have, uh, have some fun with it. Okay, let's see, here we go. So, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Titus. I'm a, uh, I'm a concept artist in the video game industry, and I'm holding a uh, concept design class which has live demos, and I'm going to show you one right now. So let's just uh, flick to the painting. Here it is. You can still see my face right there. Um, and uh, let's uh, let's get stuck in. Oh, hang on one one second. And there we are, back again. So with me are my uh, my four super cool students, which you can't hear. So if they have any questions, I'll relay to you guys. Um, and uh, let's see if we can get like a cool image going right here. So I'll walk you through the stuff that I've done so far. As uh, for my video from Level Up, uh, this image was done based on photo plates from the internet, which are set to the, uh, the free to use and reuse rights. So I took a whole bunch of different stuff, different images, so you're kind of flicking through it. And the objective of this one is to have a cool atmosphere. Um, so let's see. Yeah, there we go. Nice great background. So we're going to have a, a very moody atmosphere going. Uh, so I decided to go for some ruins. I originally wanted to demo this image for you guys. I, uh, I had it all lined up. I had everything ready. But then I decided, you know what? I just kind of want to paint ruins. It's uh, it's a little bit more, more my thing. Um, so the order which I'm targeting these layers is not the order that I'm actually working with, because that would be kind of bizarre, where I super smoothly work from, from you know, background to foreground. <laughs> um, so all these images were kind of just plonked in. Then I rearranged them. You know, as you see me doing all the other videos, I tried to get like all the stuff in, and then try to find my uh, uh, my cool little. Uh, atmosphere, my cool composition, try some stuff out. So I will show you uh, the composition. Try to set that one up right now. So for those who don't know who this is, this is the, uh, or what this is. Nice. Well, I guess now we can start personifying this thing. This is a Fibonacci spiral. Not sure if it's he or she. There you have it. See, and this is the our main composition measurement tool. So I kind of reasonably quickly threw this image together. So there's still some exploration to do left on the uh, composition. So we use we use this in a way that we just quickly get our composition grid in the uh, golden ratio. So I'm just tracing some lines and I'm setting the grid up. And now I'm gonna see if I can measure all my stuff. To sit quite nicely. Um, let's see if we can do that. Got all my separate elements going on here. So I'm trying to find a nice, like a nice balance, some nice points. You don't have to always align like the major structures with it. Um, just find something that's that kind of works. So let's see. Oh, great. Got a ton of loose layers going on here. So let me just group that. See, that's already a bit easier. Maybe add, add that guy in there as well. Yeah, so maybe maybe put this one on the uh, on the line right there. That should read pretty well. So everything basically that around these points is, is stuff that is just kind of easy on the eye and makes it easier to read. So we're going to go over that. And as we're doing that, we're just trying to get rid of some stuff. All right, and then we'll treat the other the other side the same. The thing is if we move start moving in things too close, the, the painting has no more room to breathe, so we're just gonna keep this nice on the side and maybe take this back image and align that thusly. So I talked about this in the class beforehand. So we're actually looking for uh, three focal points in every image. That's kind of the nice thing uh, how we can get through that. So if we were to look at this one, 
while I set up more grid. I think that, whoa, come on, there it is, oh, roughly, just keeping it loose. Um, one of my focal points is definitely the, the big building in the background. It's a nice, like, nice, like, bam, somewhere over there, the whole thing maybe, like, not sure, the whole thing. Uh, this thing in the foreground, that has a focal point in it, I'm not quite sure, it's, 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 you can't really say, say, okay, this whole thing is the four or a focal point? And you're like, okay, that's one third of your image is a focal point. Doesn't doesn't really work out too well that way. So we're just gonna put put a mark right there. So it's roughly right there. We want a focal point, and we can choose a third one right there in the background. But it might you know give a very flat composition like that, or we could push it more towards the foreground. You know, maybe we get some some lighting in there, or you know, we'll see. Same same goes from there. Maybe maybe it's a lighting thing. So we try to get the viewer. You know, this cool arc, uh, cool arc in there. So the shot itself doesn't have a lot of drama in it yet. It's fairly, fairly flat on. So there are some tricks that we can we can use to uh, to increase that. So let me group that again and not name a group. Shit, let let's name these guys. Guys will be fine for that. And uh, let's just group all of this shit together as well. Here we go. And we can have a play around with it. And I got locked layers, wonderful. So actually, um, let me unlock those layers. There's only one. And kind of see if we can find something a little bit more dramatic. So we just looking at the, the grit that we got, looking at these intersecting lines because they're cool, We're trying to keep some room in the composition as well, We're trying to let everything breathe. We're looking for interesting ways where it clips. Maybe a very high horizon will feel very eerie where you can't really see the top of the tower. You know, this feels a little bit more. Mm. Most of this is kind of, I wouldn't say winging it because you are using you are using the guidelines. You are you are trying to find uh, nice new things, but there's nothing wrong with setting up your guidelines and going like, okay, this is a cool composition, and then tweaking it around and saying, no, you know what, actually. I think you can do better than this. I think you can find something a little bit more, more interesting, more engaging. So here we go. Let's try that on. Do it this way. And then let's see if we got some. Get rid of some of these tangents. Can we lower that thing? No, it can be quite big. Maybe, maybe actually, maybe, maybe a little bit bigger like that. Okay. Some of the details. I don't know. I don't know. It's a difficult one. See, it has a tangent up there. A tangent just means that these lines and shapes are uh, are matching each other in a in a non-favorable way. So, see if we can kind of avoid that. There it is. There it is. Let's, let's go with that. I'm just, just going to do that. Take a sip of my Red Bull here. Hmm. I told myself I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't drink this stuff anymore, but then, you know, here it is, drinking it again. It's ridiculous. Bad habits. Bad habits. Whoa. Let's grab the right brush here. As you guys can see, I have a panel enabled. I have my panels um, in here, which is kind of cool. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure. There will be plenty of tutorials um, where it will be explained in detail how to do these things. Uh, I, I know Jonas is, uh, is setting up uh, one right now, so um, I'm sure that will be up in the next few weeks, so you guys can, can kind of check that out. Um, okay, so I'm kind of correcting my layers. Whoops, let's not do that. And uh, let's see, can I get my levels? Let's desaturate this a bit more. It doesn't really sit very, very well. And you see me, you see me like looking over to, to my right side like all the time because I'm checking checking out my hangout because it keeps crashing. I don't like, I don't know why it keeps it just keeps crashing. You see the window popping up and do the thing. Um, let's just work through it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We'll work through it. It's okay. It's okay. Right. Uh, let's see. Where were we? Right. We got our composition set up. It's all cool. It's all good. Uh, let's 
Let's get rid of some of this, some of these artifacts. Just paint, paint those out real quick. There we go. That's okay. Um, and pretty soon we can start kind of color correcting this whole piece. We're trying to go for this creepy, moody atmosphere. So. Uh, see if we can get it going. I got a couple of color examples already laid out for, for the uh, mood that I want. I'll show you in a sec. So it's two pieces I've done before that I've done previously. One of them is this one. It's called Tomb. It's a nice creepy eerie feeling with the, uh, with the cyan colors in there. And the other one's a bit more darker, like darker greens. I'm going to try both of them out and we're going to see kind of how, they, uh, how they affect the painting. Now the trick is with when you're using color matching is that it will take the whole image. So make sure that you just get a nice kind of sample that doesn't do doesn't do everything, doesn't have all the colors in it that you don't want, like these highlights or something could completely ruin it. Same for the oranges. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab a sample here, which is the uh, green sample. Cool. And now I'll grab one of this one as well. Get a nice range there, which is the Cyan sample. Oh yeah. Start bouncing some stuff. Let's see. Rasterize this layer right there. And then see what happens. Let's see what happens. Right. This is my background image right there. Wow, not a lot. Oh shit, because I got my color balancing layers on. Hmm. Hmm. Brilliant. So, all right then. So we can kind of flick through. Gives a completely different, different vibe. These things kind of you have to kind of plan ahead. You can you can test all your stuff. We can do a global test as well. Let's do that real quick. So we can see what's uh. What might be the overall feel? But usually, when you do the global test, because you got all the values in there, uh, you have a little less control, and it becomes a lot more difficult to balance everything. See, because that's not really what we're going for. I think, I think you know, if you look at the broad strokes, the green has a lot more potential. It feels a little bit more, more toxic. So we're just, we're just gonna go with the green. Let's just go with the green. That means that you can turn off all your color balancing and your adjustment layers. So these are actually these adjustment layers are all super cool if you just want to uh, manually balance all the all the layers. But as soon as you start doing things by hand or with the with the color match tool, I mean, uh, you don't have to have the others because that's just more like the by hand stuff. So let's just set everything up. We're not even gonna. Not even gonna, but usually I copy all these things. But you know, you know what? You know what? I am feeling brave. Feeling brave that this is gonna work. Save my file just in case. And let's balance all this stuff out. So the colors will be completely wrong, or the uh, the brightness and all the other stuff. Are we getting there? And the reason why I'm doing this individually and, and not the whole image is just so I have a little bit more, a little bit more control. I can tweak my foreground and background so I can kind of flick that on. That works. These work. So I kind of get some of my lighting back and I can tweak that later on. Um, let's see, that's too much color. Yeah, that'll be fine. And now everything in here. You can script all this stuff as well, but it might be a little bit too much work for just for one image. Usually, when you don't have too much stuff, it's uh, it's pretty doable. So pretty doable. Oh, do the same thing. There it is. So. Gonna darken this up in a second. Do the pack drop. Oof. <laughs> it's 
not super pretty. Oh wow, look at that. That is just messed up. Let's see if that stays in there. Hmm. I think I think that might actually stay in there. Unless this fixes it. Not really. Unless I missed something. Don't really think I did. No, no problem. You know what? You know, let's just let's just paint it out. Let's just uh Mm -hmm. Let's see, I got a little bit more of a lighter background going on last time, so yeah, that, that would just separate the whole thing a bit more. But yeah, I think that looks better. I'm completely painting over all my trees that I have in the background, but that's okay, we'll just paint them, paint them back in later on. It's fine. Uh, actually, maybe I can see what's up with this thing. See where the air is actually coming from. No, that kind of works. What's breaking? Is this thing breaking? Look at that. It's just awful. Let's get rid of that. And I, you know, just, just delete it so I don't get confused later on and ask it again. Like, who was this? Um, okay, so everything's kind of this huge mess right now. It's kind of not where we want it to be. So let's push all these values in the right range here. Oh, that was a quick one. Um, now let's correct this on the whole group while we're at it. And same for this background. There it is. All right then. Almost as exciting as watching actual paint dry. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So we got our base. We kind of got our base set up now, which is okay. It's all okay. It actually it might. Might have been better before I bounced everything and then just uh, try to like this. Let's try it again. See what the difference is here. Okay, it's just a little bit in, a little bit of value, a little bit. The other one's a little bit brighter. Our histogram is looking, looking reasonable. It's looking, it's looking okay. I can drag this thing over here. Yep. Um, but still, for the rest, every, the contrast and stuff is still kind of a big mess. So let me just try and correct that. So what we're doing now is we're just going to set up the lighting. And in this lighting pass, we, we kind of want the the atmosphere that we're going for. We kind of want the creepy, the creepy stuff going on. So I like to work dark to light. So I'll set up my super shadow first. And just kind of... Uh, paint in all the, the lighter stuff. So we want our focus to be in that thing. So we'll keep pretty much everything else quite dark. I'll put in a few highlights right here in the foreground, especially right here in the uh, left foreground, because that's where we want our primary, like our first focal point to be. As the introduction into the uh, into the painting. Usually you read painting from left to right, just like how we read uh, read a book. So kind of catering to that is it's not a it's not a bad idea. So some of our shadows gone quite okay here. Uh, but our background is still way way too dark, way too much contrast. So let's just knock. A lot of that. Let's go super extreme, then bring it back later on. Usually, I find when I go to the super extremes, they're like, "Oh man, that'll never stick." And then actually, most of that will stick throughout the whole painting, and then I'll keep it that way. 
Oh, we can already see like the atmosphere is starting to to creep into this image. Uh, the mood is is getting set. Like it feels super foggy now, which is cool. We kind of want that foggy feel. Let's see if we can get a cool fade going here to the to the high contrast kind of stuff. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh. Let's get some super brights in there. There it is. All right, we can get this foreground going. That's pretty cool. Contrast back there is still a bit too high. So we're looking a lot at our little uh, histogram. Or oh, histogram. What am I saying? I don't even know. Navigator. Because we're checking out the thumbnail all the time to make sure that the image still reads well and that the, the, main, the main ideas conveyed there pretty well. So I think I might I might want to introduce some light there later on. So brighten that up a bit. Uh, and then we're going back to dark. Like I don't I don't say okay one light one super light one dark. I, I usually just keep adding stuff in until I'm happy. I might get layers where it's just a tiny bit going on, like this minuscule correction, but that's okay. I'm used with the mess. Like, usually when you do stuff for clients, you want to make sure that eventually you polish up your PSD, maybe group everything, maybe put everything in a smart layer or something that they don't get too confused. Um, but overall, it's okay. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of getting there. We're kind of we're kind of getting the mood. I feel like it's still way too too light on the. Uh, on the top, I want I want the focus to be down a whole lot more. So let's see if we can add some very hefty like shadow shadow cast or dark light right there at the top that knocks stuff out. It doesn't have to be um, super realistic. Just now you don't have to say okay it's because of a shadow or because of a, a cloud. It doesn't it doesn't really matter too much if it's something kind of non-specific and moody. Just sell it the way uh, the way you want to. Okay, see now this is pretty cool. We're trying to use we're trying to use the whole spectrum. So right now it's it's uh, a, a very nice point. We're not using the whole spectrum at all. Let's see if we can kind of push that back. Let's see if we can use some some brighter colors. Now I don't want to go for full white. This this piece can be super moody. Um, so definitely let's knock some of it. Some of it back out again. Keep checking it. Keep balancing that. So you kind of have to see through the the artifacts of the photo right now. I mean, there's there's tons of little mistakes and weird things going on, but that's okay. I'm not really paying too much attention to that right now. I'm just looking at the mood. So flipping flipping your layer on and off, it's very useful. See, so this is the base information that we get that we kind of correct it, and then we put our lighting on top of it, and the whole like the whole scene changes, which is cool. Um, let's see, image. Oh wow, what the hell did I do? It's not my color out. Well, there it is. I wish you could dock this menu. Oh man, like the, the menu right there, if you could just dock it. That'd be so good. So let's see. 
I'm thinking this, this little building right there could be knocked back even further. So let's just tweak the, um, the levels on that. A little bit less contrast even. That's cool. So, let's see. So we got something that's pretty, pretty workable right now. Colors aren't optimal, but that's okay. Let's see. This is quite a quite a, a rich palette that we had in uh, in this image right here because there was oranges and there was some orange bounce light, and they just made the image a lot easier to read. So if we introduce that quite early on, it just gives us another little bit of uh, playroom. I think actually this foreground can be a, be a bit darker. It's all a bit too too much level balance. Actually, let's turn the levels off. I like that. Don't want to have it feel like it's a super spotlight on us, but a little bit of light in there can't can't really hurt. And then we're gonna knock back this tower into almost silhouette because that's a lot more ominous. Cool. There we go. Yeah. Right then. Did that work? Yeah, that kind of worked. That kind of worked. I'm going super toxic with this one actually might. Might be cool. Play around with some colors actually. You can get like a Nah, it's definitely not a blue kind of image. It's definitely more of a green, green yellow kind of a sickly, sickly green. Uh, let's knock a whole bunch of the color out. Having control of where you put the color is another really great way of controlling where uh, the viewer's eye is going to go. So right now it's pretty extreme the difference between saturation and desaturation. So I'm gonna knock that back just a little bit that it's not as extreme. But we definitely want a difference in there. And actually we can knock the saturation out right here in the distance. Cool. So, put the guide on again. See, we're not perfect here on alignment. See, we got some cool, we got some cool overlaps going on. The tower matches right there uh, with that line, which is pretty cool. We could add something on the bigger intersection, but overall, overall, we're kind of getting there. Let's see if I make this one a little bit smaller. Yeah, so that's okay. Let's start adding some fire. Fire. Oh god, I just I just reloaded my brush pack that I made today <laughs> at work. So if you see me struggling for brushes that are not in my super panel, that's that's why. All right, here we go. Pick a nice color. And I know that you, the viewer out there, can't see this or can't hear it. And they can't see me, and you can, but they are dead quiet. They're so quiet. So great. Usually it's like, oh, talking and shit. I'm so quiet. I'm streaming. I'm recording. So. And I got the webcam in a super favorable pos position because it's on top of my Cintiq. So you get to see like my giant forehead while I like, bend over to look at my painting. I really should get it down here, but I'm still in my temporary home. And I don't really have a desk. I'm on this like dinner table and it's barely wide enough for me to put my stuff on. That's okay. It's all cool. Just 
climb through, man. It's okay. So, I want to avoid going into the super saturation. So, kind of what these flames will actually help me do is, because I know from other paintings how saturated I want my flames to be compared to the background. And if it all gels a little bit too well, then I know that, oh shit, my saturation is probably going through the roof. Um, so, right here, this painting that I have now is pretty has a pretty nice balance between desaturated and super saturation. Um, like the background is fairly saturated, but then pulling it more towards the foreground, it dims down so the fire is actually pops a little bit more. And if we keep everything kind of the same, the same intensity, the fire will just have no pop. And uh, that'll be weird. So we got the color bleed right here. Uh, put that on winter dodge as well. So, not quite sure if these flames will stay here in this configuration, but it just gives us a little bit more to uh, to look at and hold on to, you know. A little bit of a reference point. I have no idea how, how actually how entertaining or educational this video will be when you watch it on like regular speed. I only watch these things are like sped up twenty times. Like, oh look here's a sketch. Oh and here's the colors. Oh there's the values. Oh look he's done. That was amazing. Next painting and he's like hour and a half later. Is he still painting flames? Yes. Yes I am. It takes a while. I don't even actually. You know what? Yeah I was painting. I was setting this up just now. And maybe the cool idea would be to have this like still a functioning window. I'll just zoom in so I have to lean forward less because otherwise it might get awkward. I get like real close to the camera, man. God damn. Let's try this out. Completely new. Um, maybe, maybe top lid. I'm thinking, I'm thinking top lid. I'm feeling that a little bit more. Because it balances a little bit better with the, uh, with the flames. The flame is down to up. So if we do this the other way around, it might read a little bit better. So not everything is the same direction, you know. They got a little movement going on. I think this is cool, man. I think this is cool. Let's, let's. Try this out. You know what we're gonna do it like I've done it this this a hundred times. We're gonna do it again. Maybe my class people will know what I'm talking about. Try it. Try them blue flames. Mmm, bit too dark. I actually think as cheesy as it is, I don't know if you guys saw the threats. Like I think it was in Kotaku and stuff where people complaining like, oh, what's your uh, gripe with the with the um, game industry? And I was like, that green and orange combination. Everyone was talking about it like, oh, that's so shit. So I'm going to go with green and orange because I work in the game industry. And it's apparently what I do. So there you go. So that didn't do anything. I balanced it exactly back to the point where it originally was. I'm like, yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with exactly how I had it before. Uh, let's start masking this stuff up a little bit. Uh, what brush to use? Maybe we can give like this feel of. Actually, this would be a good time to have stained glass reference. We kind of slap that on, but I don't have it, and I don't want to look for it. So just imagine there's stained glass. So check them values. It's okay. It's all okay. Maybe add a little bit of color bleed from the windows. Not too much though. Like a little, a dabble. 
table behind the ears. There it is. Ooh. Ooh. It's maybe not the perfect brush for this. Uh, uh, too much, not enough. Is it too intense? It might it might be too intense? Yeah. Okay. So I can't really. You know what? You know what? You know what? Let's just let's get rid of that shit. Try this again. It might be a little bit too too much. Like I want it to be visible, but not super in your face because. The flames need to be in your face, so you know, like sorta, sorta kinda. Was that? Was that? What was I doing? Doesn't, doesn't matter. It's fine. It's all fine. So we kind of, we kind of get that creepiness rolling a little bit. Now let me just see if we can, if it works, if we suggest that the light in the foreground is fire as well. Right there. So often I'll try this super crude stuff really quick and I'll be like, ooh. Yes, no, maybe. No. No, I think it'll break too much. Orange will be introduced in its own time. So this is this is just light which is in the scene somehow coming from some place which is not affecting it too much which is cool so it's time to do some actual painting in this thing because there's a lot of stuff which is just not not good or quite annoying and we talk about this in the class trying to get trying to define what makes for interesting designs you know the the certain feel of disconnect that you have with it that makes these weird shapes that you don't really know before that give you the new feel but still recognizable in a way and usually you can get that from how you arrange certain structures together or the setting and how you use them and then you add a little bit of design to it you start thinking of pillars and all as you go make some stuff up add some stuff in that usually does does the trick to get your to get your mind rolling to get your mind thinking about these things and then you can go into the finer finer details of the design I'm actually thinking that I need to break up the shape so a tree a tree and birds these are best friends of concentrators and smoke tree birds and smoke Yes, and flames. I heard flames. Yes, definitely flames. Flames help a lot. So, kind of looking for shape. So as as I'm thinking like, oh, I'm gonna put a tree in here. It's a perfect opportunity for me to hit some of my some of my marks. So let's do this. Uh, I'll just park it over here. That's fine. Golden rule, yo. So I'll definitely have my tree go through here. And then have it do kind of like whatever. I come back in here. Hit it through. The second one, then clips, which is fine, and then the rest can do whatever. So, turn that thing off. So, I kind of got my my bases now, and hopefully, that tree should feel okay. Oh, so let's not make it too symmetrical. Like this automatic thing that happens where you try to mirror everything that's going on in your scene. Not good. And then you're Undo doesn't work. I don't know why. I just it's been this all week that my undo won't work at home and at work. I think I just got like like a fail at Control Z. Like you can't hit it anymore. Completely, completely lost it. Let's see. 
After spending an hour on painting flames, you can spend an hour on painting this tree. Hmm. Not very interesting. Another great opportunity to look up some ref. This is not, this is not, it's not true. Branches don't, branches do much more. Gnarly things like that. Then again, I'm mirroring. Oh my god. So we can use this branch to kind of break break the windows, break the pattern, and again point towards where we want them to look. You know, like, hey, look over here, and there's, there's stuff going on there. So hopefully we create this this cool flow. I, I'm just I'm just moving on. I can't I can't spend too much time on this on this tree. So let's add some snow to this tree like that. Yeah, that's cool because it's snowing. I just decided. No, that's not true. There was already snow in the buildings. Okay, so that's that's tree. We'll come back to that later. Start adding some more snow here. So let's see. Now, I don't want to get rid of too too much of my details, but I know I'm going to erase a whole lot of this stuff out. And I'm not too worried about too light and too dark, because I'm going to probably add a, another layer on top of this where I balance that more properly. So there it is. I kind of got like the base thing in, and then I'm erasing away, giving a little bit more of that snowy feeling. I'm going to do that a couple times. Also with with that brush, favorite snow brush. Okay. Um, let's correct this a little bit more again. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's slow. Wrong tool. Wow. Shit. So I just got the question if I ever use the smudge tool. Uh, yeah, so I got the uh, uh, Anthony Jones set, which is the tool set, which has a smudgy one in here called Soft Blend. Which is just really, it's it's so good, it's so good for doing this kind of stuff. It kind of takes takes the edges off, which is nice. So I tend I tend to use that as much as I can to to take the super rough edges off. Um, it kind of depends on what surface you're painting. Like obviously, I wouldn't recommend it for doing hard surface stuff. Having that smudgy look is then a bit weird, but no, for more organic stuff like snow and, uh, and things like that, it works a lot better. So let's see. Not too happy with this actually. <laughs> just, just erase everything you just did. Doesn't even matter. It's a lot. It's a lot of erasing and painting back in, and then oh, you know what? No erasing. Uh, no, uh, I don't. Uh. It doesn't really matter too much. So this painting is progressing okay. There's still a lot of things that we need to, to fix. That was not good. It needs to be knocked back a whole lot more. And actually I still think that the overall the overall contrast separation is not high enough. So let's do that again. Take a sip here. 
Mm. How am I doing on time? Let's take a look. What time did I start? Oh. Halfway. We're about halfway. Let's knock this for the back, shall we? We really want that distance from from the foreground into the mid, into the background. We want to kind of keep it sort of sharp right there in the middle-ish near the near the middle flames. We can have a high contrast. There's a lot of light. It's our focal point, but really the rest the rest needs to be needs to be knocked back because we don't want we don't want you to look in there. It's not really important. There's no super interesting details when they just give enough information so that you know kind of what's there. Um, uh, let's let's see. Wow. No. Huh. Now that is tricky because I do want it to be fairly dark, but I don't want it to get lost. Finding a nice balance here is always key. It's important that you just take your time to get to get these things just right, just where you want it to be. Actually, fuck that tree. That's just not working. A nice idea, but it's not. It just looks. It just looks kind of like shit. It just looks kind of like. Ooh, God, what I'm trying to do with that tree. I don't know, man. Should we tell him? Should we tell him that the tree looks shit? I don't know. Maybe you'll see later on. There it is. It just, just, just. Ah, no, get, get that one right there. So I guess some people in, in the questions that they ask almost feel like it's a very straightforward process where you have this idea and the exact composition that you want to do and then it's more like how exactly do you go about making that one specific idea but it's not like that at all. As you're going you try all these these stupid things out. It's a lot of trial and testing involved and trying to make things work and Failing constantly, deleting layers, getting frustrated, taking breaks, closing the painting, opening it again, saving it, walking away, thinking like, no, you know what, I'm not finishing this anymore, and then coming back to it the next day. It's almost the same. It's almost the same when you're doing production work in a studio. Only in a studio, you have a lot more direction, and you have other people giving you feedback. And, uh, you know you're meeting deadlines, so kind of the painting dynamic is a little is a little different, but uh, you you can you still kind of get some some of that in there, and I think that's cool. I think that kind of gives the flair of some of these these concept paintings that you see. Yeah, like uh, an arch up there. I think that could be cool. The structure's not not intact. Maybe there was something more attached to this tower. Maybe maybe there was this big dome or big roof structure up there, you know, that connected to it and it collapsed. That could be another actual visual guide to keep us in the painting if we have one of those beams kind of still still kind of in there actually. It's cool. So see, we're looking at what the building could have been and uh, reconstructing it almost. And you're like, okay, does this does this now give us new and interesting opportunities? Same same for the foreground. I mean, we're already doing it. We're tr trying to draw focus into the tower and then through the tower, leading you uh, leading you back down again. Um, so to kind of give a short, quick description, is that ah uh, oh man, I didn't nope, did not set that hard key yet. Wonderful. So okay, so. This is kind of roughly when we, where we want our viewer to hover around. Is that is that point right there? And this tower is a, is a major major uh, player in that. So we're trying to get people to look 
when they look at the tower that they they look down like at a downward kind of thing that's one of the uh, things that we get to keep the viewer in so this curve right there will help with that because we have something going up from a point of interest into a curve down and we reinforce that somehow maybe with some lighting or maybe with a highlight up there or you know uh, maybe the, the light from the uh, from the fire is a little bit stronger they get drawn back in there which is good so that's one that's one of the things that we keep the viewer in there the tree that was there was kind of cool because I had branches pointing in that direction it's a little bit crude we have a three steps right there which we can use all the same we can use kind of like bounce the player in there if you have something interesting going on we don't we ne we never want to block the 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 viewer we never want to block it so kind of got this interesting window uh, and our boundaries there this is the boundary so there's nothing interesting really going on that way kind of just fades off you know like it doesn't even matter what's up there we do the same here there's a little bit of fade up there doesn't, doesn't really matter um, we got the matching diagonals I'm gonna use another color I love doing this shit actually not all of it I can just come out and say it there it is love drawing these lines and that's another one so everything is kind of happening right in between there um, and this is to keep this in the painting you know we, we need we need this this right hand side to balance everything out because we go into the painting right here and if we go straight up in here then okay we might as well do the portrait counter which is like that this would work actually all the same see if I can demonstrate that as well real quick by doing this see this is a perfectly valid composition you kinda get your lead your lead into it um, you don't necessarily have the three folk points, it would be more like uh, one, uh, two, and three. It's a little bit different. If we if we open up the whole painting like this, uh, we start in here with one, we want to direct the viewer right there, so we probably want to cap this thing off right there. Like this is a lot more dark, so you don't go there straight away. You bounce it back. And, uh, that would keep you in here. That's clear, right? These green lines, I mean, could not be any more clear. It's right there. Thing of beauty. <laughs> um, but but in doing that and kind of thinking about it, about your painting in abstracts, I, I can now see like, oh yeah, my mid-ground is actually might be a little bit too light. I might not get the the angle that I'm that I want is not what's in the painting. It's it's way too it's way too quick now. Kind of like curve it around or just chop half of the painting off or just do that and go like you know done um, I don't know I don't know it might be a little bit more what do you guys think So, students are saying portrait. Could. So, we got some tangents going on, as they're pointing out as well, with, with the building that we just put in. And we can, we can remedy that by just knocking it away much further. Um, that would kind of kind of fix it because then our eye is no longer drawn to it, which means we have to correct the fire again, or the uh, the light coming from the inside. Um, and obviously, when you rebalance, you can look at it again. So this would be roughly where I want it to be. So we kind of need to knock that section off for it to sit a little bit better. Yeah, this is a valid valid comp composition. Shit. Talk anymore. Getting how to speak. It's okay. It happens to everyone. 
There it is. Oh, no, no. Come on. There it is. Completely new painting. Doesn't matter. Wonderful. If it works, it works. Mm. I got a suggestion as well that maybe make the painting a little taller. You can try and do that. Yeah, there it is. And let's make the guides taller as well. Let's make everything taller. Ooh, now ooh, now we're actually getting close. In fact, if you make it a little bit taller still, like that. Uh like that. We get some really nice lines going on. Lucky break. Get some cool lines. Never say no to happy accidents. That's like your biggest friend, Mr. Happy Accident. An idea, the idea that we had is still the same, still valid, still going. I'm actually not do it in the paint. Yeah, there it is. And because we have a lot less detail to worry about now, we can actually up the contrast quite dramatically. So, which is always fun. Yay, high contrast images. Super mood. I'm trying to move away from super high contrast images, but it's really difficult because they just work so well. It's this. It's this cinematic hint which is in it which just makes everything so nice and it reads so nice so let's push the brightness in that tower a lot more and obviously in this little nook we still get some and with occlusion that's fairly strong we can involve the stairs a lot more Why not? Yeah, that's not working out too well. I'm just checking my values now. I'm just checking how I extreme I go. Technically, it should work like oh, with every color. It doesn't. It doesn't always actually work with every color, but it'd be nice. Uh, as long as it doesn't look incredibly stupid, I think. I think you're doing. Doing okay. So we're doing okay. There's still some bits in here which just don't make sense. So you can't correct it with anything else, but just. Painting it in, so that's what we're doing. Start painting some stuff in. Like this debris which was over here is kind of cool, but didn't really give me the the rhythm that I wanted to have, so didn't have any snow on it, didn't have any anything on it. So let's just start adding that in there. And this is where the really fun part kind of starts, is where you take complete control over the image and you just almost noodle away and this is another good moment where you start thinking about cool designs cool things that you can add on top even though the structure is no longer necessary with the with the little arch well it's I, I guess it's kind of necessary I guess we get our triangle from that now if I just reinforce the triangle on this side a little bit and just adding some snow So we're constantly thinking about all these things uh, together. We're thinking about our composition, we're thinking about light, we're thinking about cool design. So we're never we're never seeing these as 
as separate things. Well, this difference is still pretty big. So that need to be, yeah, that could do with some, some brightening. Add some noise, some snowy, snowy rock in the foreground. We're still keeping it fairly zoomed out. It's not too. Like the details aren't too important just yet because the the painting itself isn't working a hundred percent. Like we're getting there, but it's not it's not entirely there yet. We're still missing some some cool values in places. And I keep checking the thumbnail. Always check the thumbnail. Oh, some cool textures in the sky. This is getting a bit bland. It's hard to hard to look at. You're trying to balance that detail as well. So just kind of go over it with a brush and then an eraser and then the smudge tool. See if we can find find maybe some cloud or mist shapes that are hiding in there. Oh, yeah. Let's go for some smoke. knock out some of these values. Just use some smoke for that. It's always good. Some fog. Not in the places where we actually again where we want the viewer to go. But it helps create this nice soft soft light bounce. And maybe actually maybe give this some backlighting. I don't know. Maybe that could work. Let's try it out. Super crude. No. Yeah. No. What? No. There can definitely be a little bit more value separation in there. It's we're getting to the point where it's harder to read again, and the sky is definitely definitely to blame for that. But that's okay. It's okay. Hmm. Well, I'm flipping it because I don't. Now that I'm looking at it, I think the stairs need a little bit more room. The problem is if I give the stairs a little bit more room, uh, we'll see the edge of the building again, which is not really where I want to be at. So, instead of doing that, we might just move the stairs around. So let's cut out the stairs. Sort of, sort of, kind of rough. Maybe even flip them around. Completely ruins the perspective. We can kind of, kind of fix that. See, even though this is kind of, kind of weird because we're not used to looking at the image this way, it gives a bit of me. Bit of a bit of a zigzag going on. That might be a little bit more interesting. In fact, what if we make this place bigger? So stairs are a great point of point of reference. Everyone kind of has this idea of how big stairs are, unless unless you're in an MMO, because then all of a sudden. Uh, stairs don't make any sense and they're, they're huge. I think that's mandatory in every MMO. Have giant stairs. So, 
if we make the stairs smaller, we add the zigzag in there, we kind of push the stairs away from where we had them, giving us more room to play with, which is good. And at the same time, reinforcing the scale a little bit. It's sort of is and isn't working at the moment. Like I'm, I'm kind of getting, getting the feel I want. But the, the building itself doesn't really, doesn't really read too well. I think it's because it feels like it's falling over. Huh. Maybe if we swap these two stands around. So see, this is this is kind of what I was talking before. You're never done balancing your image. Chances are that your image can always be stronger and more interesting. You just kind of give it a little bit more time to figure out what exactly it is that's that's not working. That's kind of kind of bothering you. Maybe make it twice the size. Though I have to say this this particular piece is giving me a lot more resistance than other pieces have. But you know it happens. Yeah, I think it's helping. Maybe make it super wide. Oh, that's another thing that's just helping. And all of these artifacts that we're getting, it's, it's fine. We'll just paint them out later. Paint them out. Let's see how we're doing on the, on the thumbnail. Well, it's, it's going okay. It's sort of going okay. Though I do think I have to separate the building. Mm. Gotta do it. Gonna make a selection for it. So, oh, wonderful. So it's nice and easy to make a selection where you keep all your colors in the same, like 10 values. <laughs> I don't even, I can't even tell what's going on anymore in this selection. You know what, I'll just, I'll just do it by hand. Ugh, this is not super enjoyable. There it is. Okay. Keeping it, keeping it kind of rough. So we'll probably get tons of weird shit going on with this selection, but that's okay. Let's do a new oh, this guy. See if we can silhouette the building a little bit more. Yeah, actually, I guess I guess that's working working pretty well. Ah, and meanwhile, the hangout crashed again. Google, if you're watching, fix this. These issues are are getting kind of annoying. It's okay guys, I just asked Google to fix this. I'm sure they're like on it now. Won't be a problem in the future anymore. Let's see. So these the, the sky changes that we're putting in place now are actually 
kind of working. Um, they're giving a they're giving the building a nice nice kind of cutout feel, which is good. Uh, the whole thing becomes easier to read. I think our values were just way too close. It it just happens like oh yeah, nice dark and ominous, but there are different ways. You can have dark and ominous while all your shapes read really well. I think knocking things into uh, into the background too much or making them too dark is not actually always the right way of of solving it. So um, let's see. We can make it a little bit dark on the side. Maybe we got some a hint of trees in there anyway. It's more like a vignette. Cool. So cool. Color balance the stuff again. Where are we at? Ooh, that's actually cool. A little bit of extra red in there. So this is just a personal preference, but I like to keep all my values super close. I don't know. I think it's I think it's nice. I think it reads reads quite well. So we got about 20 minutes. We're like an hour and 10 minutes in right now. So we got a roughly 20 minutes. I'm making good progress. It's going okay. So let's. Start painting a few more things. Start fixing some things. Make some bigger boulders in there. Keeping an eye on our detail aspect ratio. Don't want to go too overboard with that. Probably gonna end up redoing all this rubble. It wasn't amazing rubble. So so. So I don't know if you guys have any questions so far. It's like exploding in my ears. Oh, good. Okay. So, to check your values, well, you can see. Um, yeah, the va I'd like to have my value range really close. So, if you if you look at the uh, yeah, you can look at the histogram. You can see that most of my most of my colors are all in there. Like usually, it's recommended to use the whole space, um, and I I start out with doing that, but I kind of slowly move until it's very narrow, narrow range. Well, actually, the histogram is also um, light to dark. Obviously, it's not just the colors that you're using. You can see the amount of colors which you're using right here represented. How much yellow, how much red, how much blue. And then the gray stuff is uh, uh, where all the colors meet, obviously. So, um, But doing it by eye is the quickest way. You can just instantly tell that, oh, look, this is all kind of like greens. Um, and choosing your color palette is quite important for for the mood that you're trying to go for. So this is all going for a more dark and scary mood. Ominous, unsettling. The absence of sky I, I found helps a lot with it. So when you just represent the sky with uh, almost a gradient if you do it in the right way with the right colors, it can feel very ominous because we're not used to seeing skies that way. Actually, maybe does the tower need to be taller? Does it need like an extra thing on top? Let's try that. Let's try that real quick if we let it clip with the canvas. What would happen? Hmm. 
No, it doesn't benefit at all. At all. How the hell? Maybe some structures on top. That. No, no, that's not really it either. Trying to find some room for some designs again. No roof beams. Notice that one side of the building is much wider than the other. Doesn't make any sense. Um, so I just I just did the motion blur, so I can blend some of these colors in the areas which are not really drawn to a little bit quicker. It has a nice effect, but it's quite it's quite obvious sometimes. So gotta make sure not to not to overuse it. It's a nice way to get like um, the fake light bounce on. Um, on some rocks or on some uh, smoke as well. So I try to experiment with that always, just you know, a little bit at least. Ooh, I'm actually just cheese, cheesy to do it that way. Cheesy. I can find a better solution for that. We can do better. We can have a little bit more collapsed. Perhaps. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh yes, how very classy. Mm, it's not obvious at all that I'm using composition techniques. Mm. Sometimes it's really like a pain in the ass, like, oh my god, look at that, compositional guidelines. <laughs> you can't really avoid them, they're so in your face. You, if, if you can be a little bit subtle with them, it's good. <laughs> um, it just, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to find something else, or... Um, you can still get away with it. This is another one of those trial and error things. I'm not saying that the whole class could be summed up by saying trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, composition basics and trial and error. Um, but <laughs> but it's a big part. Let's stick with that. Yeah, yeah, the visual library. I mean, we talk about it in the classes. <laughs> if you want to know more about visual library, get on my class. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, like the visual library, your whole your whole finding ref stage is, is just a just a huge huge part of that. Let's see if we can get some more stuff going on in there. Still looking for some more interesting shapes. I don't know. Ah, oh, it's 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 going okay. Actually, why not? Why not try? <laughs> Whoa, wrong value. Right there. There it is. 
Maybe there's something going on. Another building in the background. Right there. Is that a thing? Could this be a thing? I don't know, maybe. You know what? I actually think this could be a thing. What the hell am I? Oh, it's the lighting layer. Come on. Maybe you got some super crazy shapes here in the silhouette here in the background. Uh, to this place, but not t take over completely, because we got like a little triangle composition going on. So let's see if we can somehow retain that. There it is. Let's try some stuff out. I had a good shape, but now I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing now. Why am I ruining it? Oh god. Just keep it cool, man. Just, just keep going. Oh my god, I don't know. Uh what am I what is what is even happening? Random undefined shape right there. Uh yeah, I guess. I guess this has some some merit. We're adding some stuff. Maybe we can add a uh, like pillar in the foreground. Again, definitely not like that. Maybe it's smaller. Like over here. No. Hmm. Hmm. Let's integrate this building a little bit more. I was thinking of putting a beacon on top, but I like instantly thought, you know, you know what? That's that's probably gonna be a bad idea. So come on. Let's see. Well, A little bit brighter rocks right there. So, gonna make sure that we bounce the uh, we bounce the eye up again. So even those little tiny tiny rocks and tiny details can keep you in the painting. So I'm leaving it. And this is stuff you can do with the brightness and contrast layer as well. Well, you're just checking uh, your image in black and white, but just paint them in for now. Oh, how crude! How crude! So this would kind of be the point where I usually say, okay, let's uh, let's start rendering it out. 
it reads okay in the thumbnail. We got some cool places for some nice design. We have some nice designs already going on in there. The mood is uh, pretty much where I want it to be. And it'll only be reinforced if you, you know, get rid of all the mistakes that are in there that make the image a little bit harder to read. Like some of this, some of these verticals and some of the noise on the rocks. And these windows can have some detail. You know what? Actually, maybe we can. One more thing, guys. One more thing that I want to try before I call it done for today. What happens? Now, this could be my biggest fail of the evening yet. You never know. What happens if we kind of get a desaturated light and separate? Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not hating it, but I'm not sure if it's the the best thing in the world either. Mm -mm -mm. Well, as I wanted to quit the recording, obviously my my thing had to crash again. It had to crash a minute before I wanted to cut it. A minute. Wow. We're so close. I think we only had three. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe that's maybe that's the thing. Not, not sure if we can need to play around with that. I think I think the painting could definitely do a little bit more life. Maybe uh, maybe we do it like in there somehow get the tower is up a little, little bit more. Um, I don't know. Could be. Anyway, I'm gonna quit the recording right now. Um, And there was something else that I completely forgot. It doesn't really matter. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I will continue the class right now for a few more minutes. And I will see you all next time for the next recording.